sweet. We feel good too. Feel like good. Bubsy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, BLB, everybody. Be like Bubsy. The Bob of my, my life advice. B. Sure. What's up, everybody? Welcome to IGN Game Scoop. I'm your host, Damon Hadfield. Joining me this week is Mark Medina. Hi. Sam Claiborne. Hey, everybody. And CJ Gibson. What's up? I want to tell you, I don't want this to go to your, your heads. Mm -hmm. I know uh, CJ and Mark, you're both famous egoists. Oh. But yeah. uh, you yeah. both <laughs> have been very popular recently. Oh, they, nice. they wanted more of both of you. Thank okay, you and I don't think you've both been on at the same time. No, I never. So we'll see if never. this is first podcast too much. with Mark it, and it, I. Yeah, you you have two fifth wheels on. Like that's <laughs> exactly. the problem. That's, that's You're bad. running on two spare tires. Yeah, but we, we need it. you all to go out and vote for <laughs> Tina if you want to get me off the show. Sure, <laughs> Tina's also a popular. Rotate. Yeah, and then we'll, we'll, got her we'll have a full replacement. But who's going to replace Damon? Never. It's a staple. We're gonna hold tryouts. Let's just pick a fan. <laughs> we're one it's of clearly days. not me after the dis <laughs> after the discussion we had before this rolled. Uh, we're gonna do a nationwide search, maybe <laughs> an international search for my replacement one of these days. That's what the Never. world's best. I like is that about you that could have show. an apprentice. Never. Yeah, maybe young scoop. Yeah. Ah, there you go. Yeah, <laughs> Young weird. Scoops. Uh, we've got a great show for you this week. We're going to talk about Metroidvanias. Speaking of Young Scoops. Here we go. They don't exist. No. They, <laughs> yeah, All actually, it's, it's, we're, we're going to get into that. We're gonna, since we're in February, we're going to flip through the February 1993 issue. We're already cracking up. Oh, <laughs> of Electronic Gaming Monthly with well, Bubsy on the cover. I he love says, the back. Look at his eyes. What, is says, that, what does that even mean? He has a what quote, do those eyes mean? He has a quote on the cover that says, Holy hairballs, I made the cover of EGM. Boom. That's cute. Because the hairballs are gross. Are you ever going to show the back? Are we going to do it later? Yes, we're going to do it later. It's okay. It's so good. We're going to do it later. <laughs> Parents just don't understand, Bubsy. <laughs> True. But first... <laughs> Apex Legends. Mm. Oh, Let's talk about this. Now I know why I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you guys took one for the team. Now you know. Yeah. And knowing oh, is half man. the battle. Mm. In Apex Legends. It's true. Apex it's true. Legends. Uh, you guys have both been playing this. Yeah. CJ and Mark. Just a little. <laughs> <laughs> How late were up last night? A lot. Yeah. Okay. To like two and three in the morning, almost every night. Uh, the Gibson family switch over. Uh, yes. The two kids are playing it also. Yes. So now you yeah. know. Fortnite killer. Fortnite, Fortnite killer. is dead. Yeah. There it is. Fortnite is dead. Sorry, dead. Yeah. Well, that's oh. interesting. I mean, uh, so so what's your take on just Apex Legends? So I don't think up? this will surprise anyone. I don't think it's I don't think it's as much of your a, Damon's take? <laughs> this isn't much of a Damie game. <laughs> <laughs> However, I am very interested in in the way this game was revealed. Yes. Mm -hmm. Uh mm -hmm. without any pre-hype, no lead up to it. I yeah. think it's very indicative of the state of Games as a service today, and how uh, publishers are having to adapt the way they announce these games and mm -hmm. communicate via leaks. Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, <laughs> yeah. they were leaks ahead of time. Thing. Yeah. But their plan was to, you know, they didn't they didn't announce this at E3 mm -hmm. and then wait six months for mm -hmm. the game to actually be out there. Uh, I think there's a there's a quote from producer Drew McCoy who just laid it all out there is for why they chose to re reveal the game this way. They said we're doing a free to play game with essentially loot boxes after we were bought by EA. And it's not Titanfall 3. It's a perfect <laughs> recipe for our marketing plan to go awry, so why have that? Let's just ship the game and let players play. Yeah. And to be fair, That's a two-day awesome. leak is is not bad no. in this industry. Yeah. <laughs> for people to know about yeah. it two days before it comes out, that's that's great. I mean, <laughs> people seem to be uh, enjoying the game. Mm -hmm. is that correct? Absolutely. Is that correct? Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, for me personally, I can't remember the last time where I've had that one more game feeling where I keep <laughs> playing and then I look at the clock and all of a sudden it went from 11 p.m. till 3 in the morning mm -hmm. and I didn't feel like the time passed. Like, I mean, obviously, I play Destiny. It's a very grindy game. I've not typically been a huge fan of, like, the BR space. Like, Fortnite, I play with my kids just because. PUBG was never really big into. And then um, what's the other? Well, there's Rem Royale and what's... Uh, I mean, where did it start? Oh, H1Z1. Mm -hmm. Didn't really get into all those games. This game feels really special. Mm-hmm. Marcus yeah, it's take. it's it's a wild game. Uh, Division Two's uh, beta started this morning, or their oh, early yeah. access early. beta. Oh yeah, yeah. Everything's and so just I, piling up on top. Yeah. Of yeah. yeah, and so I I decided to check Twitch, and I'm like, well, if anything's going to take <laughs> Apex Legends down, it's Division Two for the day at least. You know, as far as like how many people are watching it, Apex Legends was like 280k. Yeah, Division was at like 70k, mm -hmm. and I'm like, this game is it's kind of a beast right now. Mm, like yeah. I thought. You would see a little bit of dippage, nothing. And now Division Two is like sixth. Well, and Apex is 
even more. <laughs> yeah, and Division 2, I mean, it's a good game, but it looks a little bit more of the same as Division 1. Like, there's mm-hmm. some things about it I think that they've corrected. And I don't want to speak to that. I played Division a little bit. But Apex Legend is kind of almost taking all the things that I like from various genres. It's got, um, you know, a little bit of the heroes, which they call them legends intentionally, mm-hmm. to differentiate from Overwatch. But that graphic style is very similar. I got a chance to go and see the event early and talk to the devs, you know. And, and they were worried about that specific thing. Um, Titanfall 1 had a huge hype train leading up to it. Wait, they were worried about people making connections to Overwatch or uh, yeah, comparisons? Yes, they mm. were worried about people making connections to Overwatch because the art style of, of the characters looks a little similar, and they're like, you mm. know, we wanted to differentiate them because people are going to call them obviously what they want, but that's why they're called legends versus, you know, characters or heroes or stuff like that. So, um, But then they were also, yeah, when you were talking about the release date, um, they were saying, you know, with Titanfall 1, I think even Anthem's going to suffer from this as well, there's a lot of hype where there's a narrative created by not the company. The expectation of what that game turns into then almost turns into what the community wants or thinks. And I think in some ways that's as equally, like there's parts good, but a lot of bad that can happen. And living up to that hype, I think, is pretty challenging, right? I think Anthem is going to potentially suffer from that. Titanfall 2 did suffer from that. A lot of hype. Really sandwiched in a tight like launch window of other AAA games and yeah, I, mean, I think that was I think that was more the issue. Yeah, I think everyone who played that game really enjoyed yep. it. Oh, they did, but but that's the thing. Like, but you also need those communities to stick around yeah. f- for the longevity of the game. And so Apex Legends, I think, like it feels good, it plays good. It's in the Titanfall universe, which that was the only thing I think people were a little bit concerned about. Hey, there are no Titans, and yeah. we said that to them and everything. I didn't realize the up. characters were the legends. Yeah, there. Yeah, yep. that's what I mean. There's we're th- gonna run out of synonyms. Mm. Yeah. yeah, heroes and legends, yeah. and then we have uh, uh, combatants we, with a K. It was just eventually be apex people. We could have. <laughs> that's could right. Have, it could be fellows. Fellows. That'd yeah. Be a yeah. Good next apex step. fellows. Chaps. Yeah. I, I, I think the biggest <laughs> trend I'm seeing right now with the game and its, and its success <clears throat> is that like it seems like not a lot of people like EA right now. Yeah. What do you but, mean right now? <laughs> I guess for the past <laughs> it's a brand few new years. Thing. Well, 2019. It just things happened. went downhill in 1990 or so. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But people really like respawn and they want to yeah. see respawn get a win. I noticed that. And this yeah. is like their way of like, we did it. Like respawn kind of broke out. And especially with how much they've been like, hey, eBay, EA published the game, but like we chose everything that's in it. Yeah. The microtransactions are definitely there, but yeah. like I've yet to even feel compelled to spend a dollar on it. They don't it feel intrusive in that regard. And I think it's going to be one of those games where after I've played it for 30 hours, I'm not going to mind giving it money. It's going to be the Pokemon Go thing. I played mm-hmm. Pokemon Go so much that eventually I was like, I don't mind giving you a little bit of money. Mm-hmm. Yeah. because. But what would it be for? Because they're only cosmetic, right? Which is the right thing to do. Yeah. Yes. I think that's the right thing to do. And you can unlock everything in the game. You can. Yeah. It's slow so going, obviously. That's it's, like the fairest type of microtransaction. Yeah, but you I'm don't worried. How are they going to afford to run this game? I think people... How do they afford to run <laughs> Fortnite? The, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's true. Those are all cosmetic also. And, and it's just like you have to build such a big audience. So they did. Well, right and this, game, this. this game invites more... Uh, Remember, Fortnite you pay for, though, uh, for the single only player. Only save the world. Or save like the world, yeah. Well, and then yeah. Uh, Battle Pass... Yeah. 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 This I think doesn't the, have I think the biggest I mean, that's difference between this different than a battle pass is coming out though. A season yeah. 1 battle pass mm, okay. is going to be coming. I think out. the biggest difference between this and Fortnite, the only thing that worries me a little is your character skins themselves don't matter cuz it's a first person shooter. Yeah. And that's kind of like Blackout's problem is like there are gun skins and some are really cool, but it, like you don't really feel compelled to change your character's look cuz you don't see them. Where on Fortnite, that's you see really them point. and everybody yeah. sees them. So when you click on Ninja Stream and he's Wearing a Halloween costume yeah, and it looks yeah. crazy, everybody yeah. wants it. Yeah, that's a funny thing about first person games, huh? Yeah, is that yeah. yeah. Like skins are the kind of, gun skins. They got to make the gun skins really cool. Yeah, <laughs> that's why the golden guns always look really special in those. Well, and it's yeah. crazy because Call of Duty has these crazy guns where they're like lit up and it just doesn't really fit the theme. Yeah. Where, but who cares because they look cool. <laughs> but where with Apex Legends, they totally fit the theme. Yeah. And then there's other stuff. There's like if you down somebody in Apex Legends, you can, you can choose animation. to waste time by doing yeah. like an animation mm-hmm. and you're you're the person you down has to watch you do this like it's essentially like a taunt. Like I got you. They sell those and so there's a lot of stuff there. Yeah. 
if you that, want it. That will kick into, I think, where people want the skins for those. Because there's taunts, and then, yeah, you can see the animations, and then, um, yeah, there's, there's, so there's a bunch of reasons why I think streamers and people will get into that game, but it is a well-designed game. I think it speaks to the strength of respawn. Plus, there's two locked heroes that you can pay for, and <laughs> yes. they'll just keep coming out with heroes. And play to unlock them. They're talking mm -hmm. about, yeah, releasing mm -hmm. heroes later on. So, so for someone Sorry, who... Legends. For, <laughs> yes. <no>. True. <laughs> Fellows. Yes. Uh, for <laughs> someone who played the Titanfall 2 campaign, mm -hmm. if I were to jump into Apex Legends, would anything feel familiar or connected to that? Yes. Yep. Yeah. So they've said that this is taking place, and they're going to come up with like lore details and stuff like that after that. This is about 30 to 40 years after the Titanfall 2 campaign. Um, and what's weird is that, you know, the double jumping and the Titans and a wall running being removed, that was in very intentional to make that BR space feel a little bit more cohesive. When we did actually just did an interview with Drew McCoy that we put on the site, go check it out, where he talks about that basically. Hey, we, we took Titans away because it actually felt very unbalanced in the later stages of the game. You know, in Titanfall 2, spawn, revive, and he die. said they tried like every permutation you could imagine, it, exactly. Yeah, and they, they said that they had it in there for a little bit and they tried that. And it just I mean, like, didn't I, make sense, I believe right? that if you gave the last you know 10 people or something somebody Titans, it would be a cool mode at least to include in the mm -hmm. game. I mean, mm -hmm. like, could that come in the future? There's some excuses being made, yeah. There. Well, I mean, but here's the thing I don't know if they got it running. You know? uh, I don't know. With battle royales, there is something to be said. He's like, when the Titans feel like they're a major power up, but then you have to nerf them for balance. <clears throat> Doesn't feel like that power sort of gameplay. That Everybody could be. get the same Titan though at the same time, and then there's no nerfing required. But but Sam the, Claiborne, but game the verticality is still there. There's still yeah. zip lines where yeah. you you just push square and you're just like zipped hundreds of feet in the air. There's no fall damage, so you see something going on. You can just I was jump surprised off. at how yeah. high how high up you can get in that game. Yeah, and yes. that's what I said. It seems unfair, but I mean, I guess yeah. if everybody can get there quickly with the zip lines. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and that's what I, I, I did a written impressions piece, and I'm like, the map is huge because yeah. it's not just like the guys right in front of you or to your left or to your right. I did that backwards. But uh, <laughs> there's also like this whole upper layer that makes the map essentially double in size. Mm -hmm. And it's not everywhere, but like there are just areas of the game where it's just like what you see is, is much bigger because it's like a seven story building, you know? So it's cool. So back in E3, <clears throat> EA revealed a new Command and Conquer game. Yes. But it was a free to play mobile game. <laughs> no. And there was an entire, very, very negative reaction to that. Yes. At BlizzCon, Blizzard announced a new Diablo game. Oh. No. It is a free to play mobile game. I'm sensing a trend. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> but now, <clears throat> EA has uh, just revealed a free to play game with loot boxes that everyone seems really happy with. So it has. Uh, it's remarkable. Isn't it? Isn't this how you have to announce a game like this today like don't like don't yeah. build it because yeah. people will be too suspicious of it yeah exactly yeah. like that's I, an interesting point gamesindustry.biz get people to try it by not telling them about it yeah, yeah or not mm -hmm. you know don't give them that 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 six months to sort of like Absolutely. spread all negativity about the game everywhere and yeah. it's free so you don't need to that's have that's like our role is in here somewhere and that's to tell you like is this worth your money mm -hmm. and worth your time <laughs> yeah and with this they cut out the money part of it because yeah. they just want people to play to yeah. try mm -hmm. it yeah, gamesindustry.biz had a really smart article about this, and I thought they put this really well. Uh, they said, you can already imagine the E3 reaction to Apex Legends reveal, the snarky Twitter comments, the endless interview questions about the game's business model. Like, it would just be this whole drawn-out thing for the six or seven months right. yeah. leading up to the game's uh, final release, and that would, like, bring down the morale of the dev team. Oh, and there'd be another chart. Sam, you know, oh, like charts. Exactly. Charts for Anthem or something. The Anthem oh, release chart. chart. Yeah. <laughs> okay. um, speaking yeah. of Anthem, don't you, do you think the the timing of this reveal and launch right before Anthem is a little strange? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Now you got EA just put out two games as a service, like, less than a month apart. So we did know a little bit about this in advance, and honestly, I'm trying to get like into Anthem a little bit. That, I mean, for me personally, that killed any hype that I potentially had for Anthem. And for me, the hype was low. But, <laughs> but okay, I'm just oh, no. being honest. That, that, was, like, that you, was negative. <laughs> yeah, but you, uh, an avid uh, Destiny, Destinian. That's right. Seemed Guardian. to be the target demographic for Anthem. Uh, yes, because there is the PvE component of Anthem that they're leaning into because Anthem doesn't have PvP. But yep. Destiny does have both. Yep. And the shooting and the feeling of Destiny is really good, and that's what translates so well into this Apex game. Mm. It I feels th I amazing. Think, I think that's exactly... It was like <clears throat> it, They kind of serve different audiences they do. because Anthem has zero PvP right now. Yeah. Uh, and essentially, that's how it's always going to be. Yeah. Um, 
Well, they've they've hinted or maybe saying that they want to do some PvP and Anthem in the future, but there's a mixed reception about that even. Yeah, right? so, some, that feels some, packed on. It does. Something we were talking about yesterday, uh, me and Sam and a few other guys, was like, what about Firestorm, which is Battlefield 5's Battle Royale that's supposed to be coming, or, what about coming out it? soon? Like, what It'll are they going to do? <laughs> It'll just stealth launch the day Anthem comes out. <laughs> <laughs> They're trying to kill their own game. Well, but so, like, where does Firestorm fit in all of this now? It, like, if you if you wanted to say the big three, you would have to assume it would be Apex right now, Fortnite, and Blackout. Yeah, and it's like they all offer very different. Yes. Like, what do it? Oh, Radical Heights. <laughs> Radical Heights <laughs> oh. is definitely in there somewhere. If you want to ride a bicycle, press F. To pay respects, <laughs> but it's like I really don't know where Firestorm fits now. It is is when CJ first told me about Apex Legends. In my mind, I thought it sounds like Blackout. So if it's not better than Blackout, then where where does it mm-hmm. fit? Then I played it and I'm like, this is nothing like Blackout, right? But if Firestorm is not better than Blackout, where does Firestorm fit? Its only angle is it does have aerial vehicles and a couple of those things, which Blackout does have, but yep. Apex Legends doesn't have any vehicles. But the super abilities and all your characters stuff, like you said, Damon, earlier, you know, do you play the Titanfall campaign? Titanfall 2. Titanfall 2. Did you like it? Oh, yeah. It's great. This is really it. good. Yeah, game. yeah. That's what I mean. This translates very well if you were into that because a lot of the abilities and some some of those character animations and movements are basically special things that you could do with your uh, character in Titanfall mm-hmm. 2. Mm-hmm. So you'd feel familiar in that sense. So the question that I'm asking you is, will you actually jump into a match of Apex Legends since it is free <laughs> and uh, it does, it's a it's a very it relatable <laughs> game. Maybe if you're a... Uh, uh, in the office and just ready to go. You I also check it out. Always challenge accepted. Yeah. We're gonna get Damon and W actually, in Apex <laughs> Legends. I'm gonna get your squad. I have actually heard it's uh, it's the rare like multiplayer team game where you don't have to use a headset. Yes, right. The ping so, system. Yeah. Yeah. You can just like which do that. That sounds much more appealing to me. The, yeah, the, it's great. It's good. The devs basically said, yeah, we internally worked on that system for almost like three months where we didn't actually play with comms just to see if it actually played out really well and. Destiny is a game where I've played it for years, and of all the games I've played multiplayer online, I actually have met real people. And Steven Rue is here because I met him playing Destiny. Yeah. Um, that's rare. Apex Legends, I feel like, could have that because you play with these players off comms, you win a game with them, goes well, you want to mm-hmm. connect with them, and you'll make a point to message them and say, hey, good game. And that's where that like friendship sort of connection mm-hmm. comes in. It's very rare that that Sounds happens in games. <laughs> yeah, I don't. It's, <laughs> it's not a selling point. Not to no, me. <laughs> it's really Use weird, but it's system, legit. Turn off private messages. Yeah, you're good to go. But but it is something. <laughs> that, Have people done that to you? They're like, oh yeah, CJ, good game. You up? Yeah, I've had <laughs> you up. <laughs> I get the blast. I fall more on the side that I <laughs> do not want people messaging me. <laughs> but the Bing system, it is really good. It's just one button opposed to like left yeah. on the d-pad and then this giant scroll wheel comes out and yeah. and then the characters a lot of it's automated too uh if if cj is kind of far away and, and he starts fighting you'll hear over the comms you're like oh i'm taking fire he didn't push anything his character just said it yeah and so then you're like oh okay you know or so like, you guys oh, don't think we're smart. gonna come back on game scoop next week and you guys are gonna be on here and be like are you guys still playing apex like you know what kind of fizzled yeah uh, no don't think of that i don't know i, I don't I, think so no. I, I was thinking like, okay, every battle royale that comes out, it, Radical Heights was number one on Twitch for a few days when it first it sure came out. Was. Because yeah. it really depends on like who Doctor Disrespect and Shroud and Ninja. Ninja's playing Apex. Yeah, it really depends on what they're playing as as to where the crowd is kind of going to go. And right now, Apex doesn't show any signs of slowing down. It's only day four, but. We'll see. Last thing I'll say, because I'm sure you need to move on. I don't think so, only because we look at the way Radical Heights was. That was like a, hey, let's try this. Respawn has been in development for this for a while. And the team and the success that they have, their pedigree, like those are most of the guys from like Modern Warfare, Modern Warfare 2. Mm-hmm. They know how to make AAA games. They're really talented developers. I think that this game could stick around for, who knows, like years or longer. Well, this is apparently not the only Titanfall product we're getting this year. Yep. Yes. A uh, quote from EA's Andrew Wilson on their investor call says they also have a new twist on the Titanfall universe, a truly creative take on what Titanfall is in a premium context. Mm-hmm. So I imagine not a free to, free to play game. So that'll be a mobile game. So the- <laughs> a mobile game they have to pay for. <laughs> People really wanted Titanfall 3, right? Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, I think but that, then, I don't know. But the they're, narrative they're coming, saying a new twist. Yeah, though. the narrative coming right. from that is 
look, guys, Titanfall 3 is still coming out. And I put out a tweet, and I'm like, guys, he said, and it, he he uses the word in his tweet, experiment. We're yeah. going to do a Titanfall like experiment premium product. That's not Titanfall 3. Titanfall 3 is not an experiment. Well, yeah, That's yeah. just a game. But if Titanfall has been a first-person shooter, what would a new twist that's the that's what be, i've been like, trying you know, to figure out is my, it an rts because a titanfall rts might be actually pretty cool yes. right i yeah. thought the first thing i thought of was switch. halo wars yeah uh, <laughs> yeah sure yeah maybe On switch probably not the only thing i can think <laughs> of is maybe they figure out a titans mode in apex legends and they're counting that as a premium thing i don't know i don't know mm. who knows honestly getting a game on switch is probably pretty <clears throat> appealing to them Oh yeah. yeah. Well, especially no, so since they that was whatever the twist they have, like that could not if it doesn't mean mobile and doesn't mean some different genre game, it could just yeah. mean like I figured out a cool I wonder game if they get Apex running on Switch. Well, yeah, Fortnite runs on Switch. Mm. Yeah, and it's it's a lesser version. And the thing is, when you play Apex, if you install it and just jump in, it'll tell you, oh, the HD textures aren't here, but you can play without them. I thought the game looked fine. Obviously, it looks better once I, the I textures are there. I think if Blackout didn't make it on Switch, and Call of Duties have been on uh, uh, Calls of Duty. Have been yep. on several yep. Nintendo consoles at weird times. Like late Wii era had just a Call of Duty game. Yeah, World yeah. Of War. Yeah. Stuff, so. yeah. But I think Apex could potentially. Do, they're trying to uh, lock down uh, multi uh, cross platform play as well too. Yeah. And that's yeah. I think something. If they're able to do that, there might be maybe some maybe some switch in the future. That'd be really cool actually. There's one more interesting quote from Andrew Wilson on uh, their financial call. He says, "Looking forward." We're delighted to launch Anthem, our new IP, to grow Apex Legends and related Titanfall experiences to deliver new Plants vs. Zombies and Need for Speed titles, mm -hmm. Ooh. and to add Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order to our sports titles in the fall. Yeah, they're going to take the zombies out of Plants vs. Zombies. <laughs> they're going to take the lightsabers and spaceships out of Star Wars. <laughs> then they're That's just only because they tried. They then tried really hard. They're going to cancel them after they, they do that. They tried every permutation of lightsaber, but they just couldn't figure it out. Purple? <laughs> they tried the one that has the two ends. Mm -hmm. I mean, people, I think, are pretty salty about just EA and the Star Wars franchise right now in general. So, But also. people love Respawn, like you said. They do. Respawn yeah. making this Star Wars game. Yeah. So. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Sam, Sam thinks it's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Respawn's going to do they're, it all. They're gonna, the license is going to expire by the time these games are out. Are, are we six years into the ten years? Uh, I don't remember mm. off, off the top of my head. But oh, my gosh. Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order is going to be this fall. They're adding it to their sports titles. That's all crazy, right. man. Yeah. 2012. Ooh. Yeah. So 2012. Oh, so we're getting there. Yeah. We're getting there. Wow. Three years left. It's coming in the wire. <laughs> That's not much. <laughs> and no, there's been not. two, two. Games, and, and they, they were, were both, both flops. I mean, not <laughs> flops. No. Well, I, mean, flop. I, mean, I mean, like, That's hurtful. sold. That's hurt. Millions of times. Surrounded by controversy. That second one yes. was more than the first one. Amazing first game. One was also slightly controversial. What was the controversy? There just wasn't no single player. It was no single player. It was light. Yeah, but you're right. But looking at what that was now, it's like that they were just like too soon in that market. Like free to play wasn't really. They should have not announced it, put it out for free. They should have done a Star Wars battle royale. Taking out the Titans. But the hype but the hype surrounding Titanfall. No add The tight the the hype surrounding Titanfall one. Like I remember being at E three when that launched. Like that was amazing. And I think that again, that's one of those things where like, oh, needed a campaign. Yeah, but most of the time those campaigns, like Call of Duty eliminates it. You play it once and that's it. And yeah. you know, then you're not playing that part of the game. You know, anymore. EA, now that we know they can just stealth release battle royales anytime they want, everybody mm -hmm. plays them. <laughs> they should just stealth release a, a Star Wars battle royale. Just blink it into existence. Yeah. Like make it happen. Done. It's not that happening. one I'm would be much more likely to check out. Mm -hmm. right. No lightsabers. Yeah. Let's check in with the listeners. Hey. Hey. Listeners. Listeners, remember you can always reach us at the email address gamescoop at IGN.com, just like Mark did. He says, first off, I wanted to say thanks. Now, this is Mark with a C. Oh. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> I want to say thanks for all the hours of entertainment you guys have provided me. I am a project manager working from home. And between conference and customer calls, I love to hear you guys talking and debating the current news in the gaming world. With a few dads on the panel, we swapped out one dad for another. Oh. Uh, with probably limited game time like myself, I feel that story is the main draw for me to keep playing a game over actual gameplay. That's why I did not finish Phantom Pain. Great gameplay. Could not care less about the story. A good story is like binge-watching a great TV show with good character development. I was wondering for the rest of the panel, what keeps them coming back to a game, gameplay, or story? Oh, that's a tough one. I don't know. I'm going to let you guys talk, and I won't interrupt you. 
<laughs> just for this one YouTube guy that says to stop interrupting. That's funny. I know who you're talking about. I don't. And then, think and then I will share my though. opinion, which everybody already knows on this. Yeah. <laughs> so go ahead, Mark. Uh, yeah, like I'm a. I'm a bi- <laughs> <laughs> I feel so weird. Now. <laughs> no judgment, Mark. Okay. Mark with a uh, K. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a big story guy. <laughs> I think. Uh, you think? <laughs> Is that the uh, it, right it's, answer? It's, it's, uh, am I good, Sam? I'm not going to criticize your opinions. I'm just going to share there's mine no, after uh, you're done sharing yours. There's no, there's uh, no right people answer. already I, know I'm my defi- I'm definitely more into story, uh, which is which is why Fallout 76 was such a disappointment. Mm. Um, like I'm way more into story games like Last of Us, Uncharted, uh, stuff like that. But like lately, and I don't know if it's just because of how good it is, but lately I've been playing nothing but like shooters. I've been playing nothing but Blackout, nothing but Apex now, mm. and and this Blackout you thing. Play that Mario sixty four game a lot. Yeah, yeah, but not for the story though. <laughs> Anymore. I already, I already you know, know the happens. story. What already, does happen in that they game? They were going to make a cake for Mario. If you have 15 <laughs> okay. minutes, I'll show you. And then, <laughs> <laughs> boom. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I've always been like, oh, single player story, and then Blackout just hooked me. And now I've, I, I've kind of like switched over to this realm of like getting on comms with people every night and comms makes it sound cooler than what it is but <laughs> um but i'm i would definitely say i hold firm as like i'm more of a story guy when i look at the games i'm looking forward to in the future it's less uh shooter games and more like playstation's lineup you know death stranding mm-hmm. uh ghost of tsushima like last of us 2 mm-hmm. um those are the games that like actually excite me but right now i'm playing a lot of shooters <laughs> nice all right cj uh gameplay mm-hmm. is that all right sam <laughs> this is not what my intention was. Okay. Um, no, for, for me, I think overall it's gameplay, but I mean, I think the exception to that space was when we played God of War. I mean, we've talked about this mm-hmm. a few times mm-hmm. on the podcast where I think that that was just the most beautiful hybrid of those two things together where I didn't feel like I was choosing one or the other. I had both. Typically, I am a gameplay feeling guy, though, because I play Destiny because everybody says like the shooting feels amazing. The campaign and the story are often criticized as being very weak, but it's the gunplay and it's the feeling of the game that keeps you coming back. Um, Is there what happened in the end of Destiny 2? Well, it depends on which <laughs> part of the Don't game. People okay. get mad. Yeah, I know. I won't spoil it, but but that's the thing. Like Destiny has like content that gets released that like makes you know a new part of the story that you have to play again. Uh, would you have wanted? I think I asked this last time. Would you have want God of War to have a DLC that had a new story elements to it? For me personally, I wouldn't. And Damon, I mean, you said that you don't usually play DLCs often. Mm -hmm. I feel like God of War ended beautifully, Mm -hmm. and it's like I just want God of War 3. I actually don't want any. You don't want God of War 2? Well, sorry, that's you're right. (laughs) There's already in my brain, I'm like, all right, there's a God of War 1, 2, and 3. Now there's a God of War 1. Yeah, God of War 5. Um, But yeah, so I would want like the next sequel to this God of War rather than a DLC. But, you know, but that's because I'm normally just a gameplay guy Mm -hmm. and I don't like dive into the story too much but i appreciate them both when they're done right and i think god of war is that example of both done right you're also yeah. a ninja guiding guy i am and that's actually uh a rare example of an nes game uh that actually <clears throat> had some story yeah absolutely mm-hmm. that was one of the first nes so games good. with like cutscenes mm-hmm. and all the rest of that stuff and i translated and played like people talk about like oh cj's saying ninja Gaiden again i played the <laughs> xbox one as well too so <laughs> it was nes and xbox i liked the stories but the gameplay in yeah. nes and xbox was both super tight gameplay um and yeah those like cutscenes in like an anime so style good on the nes mm-hmm. there's just nothing else it's weird to say that but there was nothing else doing those at the time yeah no. and it just felt really really high tech. Doom, doom, yeah. doom, 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 doom. oh so good i actually went down a little spree you can see on my twitter where i started listening to like 8-bit music uh mm-hmm. and i think i'll find out which level it is but one of the sounds in the tracks is from ninja gaiden and it's so awesome mm-hmm. it's just yeah, there's just the music and, and all the rest of that feel it definitely plays a part. But I am a gameplay guy, I think, overall, more so than a story guy. Yeah. Sam. Well, so I, I think the thing that gets me to come back play uh, to play a game most, it would be like there's certain hooks in like character development that get me the most. and Or, or it's exploration, which I've talked about a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, I want to like, you know, see what's under everything and around every corner yeah. on top of everything. Like I like games that are like that and beautiful. But the thing that hooks me is always like uh, level building progression or like, you know, loot. It, it really, that those type of things get me coming back and that would be categorized under gameplay. Mm-hmm. But my, my overall thing, I, and I, I won't go into it too much, but I think games are really bad at telling stories. Mm-hmm. And I know it's fun to watch dialogue and scenes to play out. And it 
man, Red Dead has those mm-hmm. spades. It's, it's really mm-hmm. great. Mm-hmm. I love watching that. And I, I actually was you know, interested in some of the characters, but you know, as a narrative device, it's like 70 hours of bad storytelling, and then you watch a great five minute segment. And that's not good. <laughs> I don't think that's like that's not a good reason for me to spend my time like thinking like I'm gonna explore these great stories. Now why I like the level progression stuff is because that's my story. And why I like exploration is that it's my story. I was just talking to somebody today about, like, where did you go first in Breath of the Wild? Like, which direction did you yeah. go in? Mm-hmm. And they, they talked about how they uh, she talked about how she found, like, this horse first. And it was this giant horse, and she didn't have any weapons. And I was like, oh, that's a really cool story about a game that the game made happen. And only games can do that. I think that's really cool. But mm-hmm. watching cutscenes, like, I'm playing one of the worst games for cutscenes I've ever played right now. Uh, Kingdom Hearts. I was gonna say, is it Kingdom Hearts? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. I mean, like they're just—they're not directed well. Yeah. They're just poorly translated. They're—they're they're not directed well, and then they're just not written well. And you told me like, we're gonna skip them all. Enjoy it. Oh man! Like you're trying. You wouldn't believe how many there are to skip. No, that's there's, another thing. <laughs> that's the problem. Is there a skip is, is like, option? Is, yeah. yeah, there okay. is, and it's like cutscene starts and you do skip, and then it's like it goes okay. to another, and cut then scene. it just goes to the next cutscene. <laughs> it you're chains like, them. Well, and the, I like, don't know what, but the difference is between them because they can skip the. It's so <laughs> well, mad. I played through the the Tangled World, and the Tangled World is like a few hours, maybe two or three hours. That's how long. Pretty much most of the worlds are. And I, I, we were capturing for this like iconic Disney scene thing. And I captured every Tangle cutscene in the theater mode. And it was like 45 minutes long. Wow. Oh, and I'm Kojima like, show. three hours. It is very Kojima. <laughs> yeah. 45 minutes of cutscenes. And it's so much. But it's and not like, so... you know, I have other problems with that game. And I don't want to just mm-hmm. outright dismiss Kingdom Hearts 3. But like, that is an example of like the game, what the game started at. And we've gotten really far from there. Yeah. I just think it's retro more than anything. It's like an old PS1 game or PS2 game or something when you see Resident Evil now you're like wow that I can't believe how bad the acting yeah. is mm-hmm. it's the same thing in Kingdom Hearts yeah. 3 Mighty which Mighty. just came out but uh, <laughs> but Red Dead is on the other end of that in terms of acting and then like games that tell good stories like Portal 2 like yeah. the yeah. whole thing start Amazing. to finish is telling a story and weaving your character into it there are some yeah. games like that, that and it marries that. it so well because Portal 2 like never so I mean most good. Valve games they just they don't stop you mm-hmm. yeah. you get to just do whatever you want I will say uh, as a, ca- a caveat to like storytelling what I don't like, I actually don't like Telltale games at all. Like that style of games. I feel like there's got to be gameplay in there. Yeah. And that's, I can't, we were talking about Walking Dead, I think on Unlocked. And they were like, you never, like, I think Miranda said she never finished the first season. I was like, I never even finished the first episode. I was like, done. Yeah. And a lot of people say it has a really good story, but like that alone could not hook me. Mass Effect 2 is the perfect Telltale game. It has mm. these really, really in-depth character trees yeah. and dialogue options and stuff, and then it has really fun shootery exploration-y gameplay between mm. them. Like that's like that's my ideal for like what Telltale could have been. It just it just cuts out all the gameplay, right? But we talk about we talked about this last week uh, or the week before about sequels and like the reiteration of these newer versions of the games. Like, is it harder now because especially with set franchises to yeah, to like differentiate from what they were before, or, or do something different. Like it, it's really weird. I think that the bar almost is set. Like, I, I don't know. I think our expectations are almost now impossibly high. That uh, I don't, maybe they weren't before. I don't know. Like, I don't. I don't know what I'm actually trying to say. But I think I anyway. Th- yeah. Okay. But the sequels are hard. That's that's the. Long I can't story. believe you're still talking. Yeah. Whatever. Uh- <laughs> But I think your point about Uncharted is great. I mean, I, I do want to see what happens to Nathan Drake in that. It's just you also murder 500 people from start to finish. And I'm like, that's not really good writing. It's not really a good sure. story. But it's still really fun. <clears throat> but it and that's all that matters in the, the end, you know? Yeah. yeah. It tells a good enough story, and the gameplay is still really fun. That's what kind of keeps you going. But Tomb Raider is the same. Like, everybody usually likes that, but like, oh, it's weird. She's, like, taking out everybody, and no, no remorse. Mm-hmm. Let's go. Kill there's, remorse, <laughs> there's remorse on the first kill of the first game. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And they, then they, minutes at least, later. They tried to build that into her character with this new trilogy. Yeah. Uh, in the older games, you know, it's just whoever. Yeah, go. Um, no, I'm absolutely 100% a gameplay guy. Uh, yeah. I agree with Sam. I don't think I think there are games that tell good stories, but they tend to be the exception to the rule. Yeah. Uh, but I care about learning gameplay systems, learning game mechanics, figuring out how the game works, how to dominate the game, how to exploit the game, getting stuck in yeah, satisfying. That's a good point. I like that that way of phrasing getting it. Getting stuck into a satisfying gameplay loop that I can just mm-hmm. go around and around mm-hmm. and around in. That's yeah. everything that I like. Then when there's a game that also has a great story, like God of War, that's great. That's a nice bonus. But yes. yeah. Yeah. as uh, using Metal Gear Solid V, The Phantom Pain is an example. I don't need a good story uh, right. to, yeah. to go along with. 
a satisfying gameplay loop, which I think that game has one of the most satisfying gameplay loops in recent memory. Well, because if God of War told the same story, but then the gameplay wasn't fun, yeah, that's like, rough. But that's kind of what Red Dead Redemption 2 was to me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, yeah. Was, uh, I, I was compelled to see that story through to completion. It's, it might be the best video game story I've ever experienced, but I didn't think the gameplay was that fun. So mm-hmm. I really need, like, Spelunky is a great example of just like a pure gameplay, oh, yeah. perfect gameplay that you can play over and over again your entire life, uh, and it never gets old because it's just a really, really well-designed game, whereas God of War, I don't know that I'll ever play that game again through mm-hmm. to completion. Right. You know? yeah, I've already, yeah. I feel like I've already done it. You know? yeah. mm-hmm. Moving on to Teo from Vancouver. Canadian. He says, I've been a listener for a few years now, and through the podcast show and, of course, the internet, I've heard the term Metroidvania many times. How is it that Symphony of the Night gets some sort of partial credit for originating this (laughs) genre when there were three Metroid games before it? This is something that has never made sense to me. If a game has the mechanics of a Metroid game, it's described as a Metroidvania. Right. It should be described as Metroid. Does Teo have a point? So I wrote this. <laughs> okay, good. I, Teo. I want the clarity as No, well. it's a, yeah. that's, that's really a great point. <laughs> it is. That's I, I, super, yeah. They're Metroid-like. I guess like, I never really you, thought of it. When you look at Super Metroid, you would describe Super Metroid, which came out way before <laughs> Symphony of the Night, as a Metroidvania. Yeah. <laughs> it's is like, it just because they're trying to like uh, cover more bases and give people, if you just want, if someone it doesn't know what a Metroidvania is? I went on a rant on Twitter about this, and I got a bunch of people to respond to me, and the biggest of Defenders of, and believe me, I love Castlevania games mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. became like Metroid. Those are mm-hmm. awesome games. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're saying there's like some other elements like uh, random loot drops and uh, stuff that Castlevania brought into it. But we don't we don't classify all Metroidvania games yeah, I feel as like having those. There things, could be so. a Metroidvania that doesn't have random loot drops. So right. yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, they're just Metroid likes, and you know, there's <laughs> probably games from before Metroid which are like that too. Yeah, maybe the RPG elements. Because uh, Symphony of the Night had, you know, you leveled up yeah. and you, you Night, equipped like, gear. It clearly added stuff. Mm-hmm. And like, I don't know, I would I guess I wouldn't say it refined Super Metroid. People think Super Metroid is a perfect game, mm-hmm. yeah. you know, so I don't know if it refined that. But it, it's definitely, it, it, when we read an issue of EGM, it was, sh- remember that? It was shocking that there was a 2D game out at the t- when that game came 1997. out. 1997. People were like, oh, mm. the graphics are so retro and weird, but yeah. it's really fun. Trust me. Yeah. Like, yeah. that is a weird mentality for us now. <clears throat> but it did make it possible to have more Metroid games in the 2D style because there hadn't been one since Super Metroid. Mm. And then we got a few more on Game Boy, which is great with those Game Boy Advance games. But then Castlevania really started doing them. Like, it probably yeah, had yeah. 10 games yeah. in the time that there was two Metroids yeah. out, you know? Yeah, all on the DS, like, Aria yeah. of Sorrow. Yeah, yeah they exactly. Were, they were yeah. pumping them out. So then, like, I think that just a big audience knew what Castlevania was more than they knew what Metroid was. That makes was. sense. That could be. Yeah. Yeah. It's an interesting question. I actually hadn't thought of that. Oh, yeah, it's really good. Uh, speaking of EGM, let's dive into the February 1993 issue. Mm-hmm. Right here, of course, Bubs on the cover. It also says, play as the bosses in Super NES Street Fighter 2. Oh, that's oh, right. That was for and the uh, Bison Turbo. And Bison yeah. 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 All right. uh, there's also a first look at 32-bit 3DO system. <laughs> uh, so good. Sam, right here, there's an ad right in the beginning for a whole page on just Taito games. Games like uh, The Jetsons for mm-hmm. NES. Mm-hmm. Panic <laughs> Restaurant. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, that's a very, very rare game. And the Flintstones. <laughs> What's the Flintstones game name? Surprise at Dinosaur Peak. Surprise at Dinosaur oh, Peak. Wow. Mm. And I also love, Sam. they just have this like drawing of this person who's clearly a middle-aged man. This is like not a kid, I don't think. Because <laughs> yeah, kids don't didn't like the Jetsons. And <laughs> <laughs> They're just trying to hit their target demographic. Uh, He's really licensed. being blown yeah, away by really those weird. games. Yeah, speaking of those... Uh, in the letter section, the Street Fighter Two Boscos, they say, "Okay, this is Ted from Nashville, Tennessee." Wait, what's the letter section called? Uh, letters to the editor. Interface. Interface. Ooh, letters nice. to the editor. Let's interface with the listeners. Okay, <laughs> uh, okay you guys, remember, <laughs> listeners, remember you can interface with us <laughs> <laughs> at the email address. Uh, Ted says, "Okay, you guys have proven yourself over and over again that you are the one source that we can go to for the straight Street Fighter Two scoop." You've given us codes that even Capcom doesn't know about. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if that that's one. possible. <laughs> Capcom's like, who left this in the game? <laughs> <laughs> and you have kept us informed on the latest Street Fighter 2 news. But when you say there aren't any boss codes, I just don't believe you. Lots of players at my school say they have accidentally stumbled into the nice. secret boss code. None have been able to duplicate it, though. Why is there so much secrecy about this trick? 
All right, so EGM says, rumors continue to persist about the proverbial Street Fighter II boss code trick. Do you guys know about this yeah. trick, by the way? Heard I, I don't know about yeah. the Street Fighter one. This I, sounds... As we stated in the past, there aren't any methods within the game itself that let you play as the bosses. While many players have heard about a trick, nobody's been able to prove it, as the letters above indicate. We have been investigating the issue quite diligently, though, and we have discovered an indirect way that lets you play as any one of the four bosses. You have to have the Super Nintendo Game Genie. Mm -hmm. And then they just give the codes. For yeah, the yeah. yeah. there's the codes. Yep. Yeah. So that's, at that's the time, uh, I th I'm sure the arcade version <clears throat> of Street Fighter II uh, got the update for what was it called, Championship Edition? Uh, yeah, on, on SNES it was Turbo. But yeah, yeah, well, yeah, in the arcades it was. I think <clears throat> the second one was Champion because it was the World Warrior. Yes. And then there was Champion, and that one added the bosses, and I think that led the uh, you know a little bit ahead of home systems, and that's why people mm. thought you could play as those characters. It sounds mm. a lot like the whole Mortal Kombat, the schoolyard, like who is Ermac and something. Yeah, like Ermac was yeah. nobody. Well, and that game had in the, uh, in the arcade, you know, like Shang Tsung was like a uh, difficult character to unlock in yeah. two mm. or whatever, right? There was yeah, like, wasn't there a? Uh, no, no, Shang, Shang Tsung was, was a one? playable character in two. No, wait, in Mortal Kombat, in Mortal Kombat, uh, two, he was reptile, there. reptile, reptile. Yes, you're right, you had yeah. to do all these like weird At things, the stage the fatality, thing in front of the moon, and double flawless, like uppercut. Then you would get them, yes. and then Ermac was just error macro that eventually was was you know rumored into life. Yeah. Like, yeah, I want good, good times with rumors back then. Yeah, yeah I want to remind everyone that if your letter was picked as letter of the month in EGM back in the day, you won an official EGM T-shirt, which is just a black T-shirt that says "In Your Face." Nice. And I want one so bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's like everything, even the marketing, it was always in your face. In your Why, face. What wow. do people get Explosions. for getting their letters read on this show, Damon? Well, we need to have an official uh, GameScoop t-shirt, but we can't come up with anything better than in your face. In your That's face. pretty good. Yeah, you it's, can't the perfect, good. it's the perfect it's t-shirt. Really yeah. uh, Gary in Washington wrote in to say, since you guys are the first, last, and only word on video games, I have a question I hope you can help me with. <laughs> I'm a huge fan of Mortal Kombat, and I was wondering if there will be a home version of the game on any one of the main 16-bit machines, hopefully the Super Nintendo. Ooh. The game does possess scenes of graphic violence, but they only enhance <laughs> the realism of the gameplay. <laughs> we'll just change them to <laughs> Sweat. It's like he's We're writing good. to his mom about getting a copy of the game. <laughs> I know Nintendo of American delayed the release of Street Fighter 2 because of the few scenes that were somewhat bloody, but what will they do to Mortal Kombat once they get their hands on the gore in that cart? I wonder sweat. if it even has a they'll chance of getting to a home system. They'll, sweat. they'll change it to sweat and add a blood code. That's crazy, EGM but no. Says, SNES did not add a blood code. Continue. EGM says, great news, Gary. Acclaim has announced that they will be doing the mega hot quarter muncher Mortal Kombat for the 16-bit systems. Very little information Information is presently available, and as to how they expect to get Nintendo to approve all the blood and violence is anybody's guess. We should have more information next issue after we come back from the Winter Consumer Electronics Show. Man, they're already he, worried about Nintendo. If he could have taken a teleport to uh, last week's Mortal Kombat reveal, <laughs> wow! wow. Well, he probably that's... would have been cut in half by that teleporter, <laughs> and then the teleporter would have taken his eyes and, and eaten pushed them. his brain out of his head. <laughs> And but after he's done seeing all these fatalities, tell him it, it'll be on the Switch. Exactly. You did yeah. it, Gary. Yeah. But the gore in Mortal Kombat 11 just enhances the realism. That's right. Yeah. Kombat. yeah, it's real. It's real. Uh, Jared Petty, <laughs> if you're listening, there's an ad for Pirates on Sega Genesis. Oh. In this issue. It's probably a better version than the NES one. <laughs> probably. Uh, game of the Month in the review crew section was Out of This World. Nice. On the Genesis. Interesting. There's little cartoons of all the reviewers. Yeah, they draw a lot of cartoons. Uh, they said, give it nine, three nines and an eight. This game, everyone knows what this game is out yeah. of this world. Yeah. Very totally. cool game. Uh, this game does a brilliant job of combining game technique, visual presentation, and storyline. We, we don't talk about game technique often enough. <laughs> no. Think. Game technique. I am absolutely amazed <laughs> you know, by the quality of this title. Qu quick aside, behind the scenes, you know, people ask us a lot, like, why don't four people review games? Uh, the truth is, none of these people beat this game. And, no way. And, and, and there were short one, games. They each wrote like fifty words on it. And they wrote fifty words. Yeah. So they just had to have initial impressions <clears throat> of it. It's a, it's a, it's a different situation. I just wanted where, to. Where it's been a discussion things? recently. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, there's also an ad: trade in your old 16-bit system and get fifty dollars off the brand new Turbo Duo. Oh, nice. trying to push the Turbo Duo. That yeah. was a CD-based add-on thingy. Like kind, the, uh, like Turbo kind, Graphics 16, kind of. Kind of a better deal than you can get nowadays. Did you see that <laughs> Final Fantasy world. ad? Um, oh, this is oh. Uh, Final Fantasy Mystic Quest. Mystic Quest. The, Looks like a the, Mortal Kombat ad. Yeah, so it has a brain. Head the brain lube and oil change, $39.99. It's a dipstick <laughs> in that brain. <laughs> we Now uh, I have to, this is a family For program. Final Fantasy. I have to edit that out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or just crush the eyeballs to make it realistic. Exactly. Echo the Dolphin received an editor's choice 
Award. Naturally. Uh, one of the views says, this was the top seeker game that Sega was raving uh, about but not showing anything. They were right, as this game deserves all the praises that we can dish out. Everything from the animation to the quest to the sound and graphics is almost perfect. The idea is new and innovative. The hot Sega game this month. <laughs> <laughs> well, we all have worked for it. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty true. Uh, uh, there's also there's a, an ad for The Empire Strikes Back on Game Boy. Mm-hmm. I get the tagline nice. is The Empire Strikes Everywhere. You see, pretty good. So you published it? <laughs> yeah, Made by published Capcom. by... Or, yeah, published by Capcom. Capcom. That's yeah. cool. <laughs> that was a, a brief licensing <laughs> moment, wasn't Capcom it? Had, we need to go so back to EA that. has the Star Wars license today. <laughs> yeah. Capcom back had it then. in 1993. Oh, well, at least man. Capcom didn't squander it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they had the Empire striking everywhere. That's a joke because uh, they squandered it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's Brendan see. Brendan Stimpy. Yeah. Oh, so good. Oh, yeah. You guys had that in be. Canada. Maybe you had that in Canada. They review RC Pro M2. Nice. Yeah. Remember, this is 1993. Really yeah. Think about how old the NES is. Yeah, it's late. Point. Yeah. It's late. That's I a- hope everyone's noticing the Lethal Weapon ad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so good. <laughs> they really liked RC Pro M2. They gave it four eights. Yeah. Uh, they also reviewed Super Mario Land 2. Absolutely the best Game Boy action game I've ever played. This game has maps, cool round separation, a variety of round-to-round objectives, and just the, remi- the right amount of action. The end product is a graphic, sound, and play tour de force that shows the Mario motif has yet to lose its style. Most cool indeed. So round separation <laughs> is a world map. Is that... I guess. Yeah, is it? You know, like, why, why would they round? They've separated the rounds in a really interesting way. Yeah. Round. Round. Ah, sep- okay. Like I had, the round, you're, picturing, you're picturing round. The rounds are levels? I had no yeah, idea the rounds there. are levels. Funny. And like Super Mario Brothers 1, separation. it just goes from one to the other. Yeah. But It's funny how that overworld map did persist, though. They've never really gone back to no overworld map. Done. Mario, yeah, but they've Mario, gotten a little boring. Uh, um, that one's all right. <clears throat> yeah. Mario World is the best map. Yeah. So there's a two-page spread for Bubsy. Uh, here where Bubsy's holding like a press conference and the questions <laughs> the reporters are asking him are a real time capsule of the 90s. Questions like is the fur still flying between you and Roseanne? Did you get those ears from Ross Perot? Oh. Weren't you a centerfold in National Geographic? Is it true you eat hedgehogs? Is it a fact that you bit Barbara Walters? <laughs> These are the questions being asked of Bubsy. Wow. <laughs> Are they just mentioning real celebrities, or or did (laughs) Barbara Walters get bit by somebody? I don't know. (laughs) Yeah, did she? Did you just get bit by Barbara (laughs) Walters? But that's interesting. They're they're trying to probably take like that Sega play, where just to be a little bit more edgy, because Nintendo did have that family brand that Sega Mm -hmm. was kind of going into, trying to. Yeah, Bubsy was like a copy paste of of Sonic. Sonic, (laughs) Exactly. We need to make this money too. Yeah, yeah. But then all the mascots were. Yeah. And then we come to EGM's top 10s, where they have top 10 lists for each platform. Super Nintendo, Genesis, Game Boy, Lynx. Uh, But then at the bottom of the page, it says Babbage's. This information below is provided by Babbage's. So I don't understand. So sales figures? Well, but yeah, but like it's EGM's top ten, or is it Babbage's? Is, oof, and why does yeah. it say Babbage's below when there's nothing below? It's, yeah, yeah. it's just a mess. Of. So that's their mm-hmm. top ten of like each console generation. No, just like right now. Or Do you see oh, how right mean now. that Mega Man ad is? Help Mega, Mega Man, Man turn five. Proto Man into spare parts. <laughs> Is that what Proto Man deserves? Oh, ow. I believe Proto Man's his little Savage. brother. <laughs> They're brothers. Exactly. Oof. Man. Proto Man's story is very sad. It is. Uh, let's see. Oh, but yeah. But was the gameplay good? In uh, Mega Man 5? Absolutely. Sure. It's all right. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. it's good. It's Thank more you, Buster. The same. I couldn't whistle, but I was waiting for you to do it. Thank you. Uh, the top 10 Japanese games of this month. This comes from uh, Famitsu, if anyone's interested. Uh, number one was Dragon Quest V. Uh, following on wow. from that, Super Mario Kart, Magic Quest, Ooh. which is a Mickey Mouse game. Yeah. Yoshi's Cookie Famicom version, then Dragon Yoshi's... Quest 5 is a PlayStation game. Uh, no, it's a Super Famicom. Oh, it was on Super Famicom. Mm. All right. Yoshi's Cookie Famicom and the Game Boy version are both on this list. Super Mario Land 2, mm-hmm. Fatal Fury, Sonic 2, Street Fighter 2, and Romance of the Three Kingdoms. Three. Mm-hmm. Man, those are some good... Oh, that was some up. strong lineups right there. Whew. Romance of the Three Kingdoms is like... The- <laughs> They're about to have a game come out. Yeah. It's a long-running franchise. Yeah, that's still going. Here's an ad for a game called The Combat Tribes. Did we talk about them earlier? Combat Tribes, yeah. I that's, remember that. a, that's another name for uh, heroes, legends, Combat Tribes. Gotcha. Tribes. Okay. And they, went, they chose to go like the comic book route where they're telling a little scene here. Yeah. I don't know anything about this game, Combat Tribes. It looks like maybe it's like a, a, a Final Fight 
double dragon sort of a brawler. Mm. But we have a woman here who shows up in the comics and she says, I'm Martha Splatterhead. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> I think it's German. I'm Heir Martha. to the Splatterhead <laughs> fortune. Says, yeah. <laughs> I'm Martha Splatterhead, renegade cyborg and fabulous babe. I bailed on the military and have come to take over all the gangs in New York City. Naturally. Well, now remember, she was programmed to say that. <laughs> yeah. Yep. It's not her fault. Not even my old buddies, the combat tribes, can stop me now. Don't count on it, Splatterhead. There it and is. one of the combat tribes rides in on a motorcycle. Oh, no. He says, just because you're once part of the unit doesn't mean Bullova, Blitz, and I will show mercy on your you and your bootlicking gangs. <laughs> she says, why, Berserker? Why, you wouldn't hit a lady, would you? Thwack! He punches her in the face and says, cyborgs ain't ladies. <laughs> so there's a moral the to the story. <laughs> yeah. If you take anything from this. Yeah. You don't need to play this now. And pretty much everything is like the military is corrupt and the police force are corrupt. And naturally, they need to carve their own path. That was the, always the, uh, the journey I think we realized. Cyborgs ain't ladies. Uh, wow. Does anyone remember, anyone remember this company, Comerica? Mm-hmm. Comerica? They made a bunch of bootleg uh, NES stuff in the Aladdin. I think. The headline here, mm-hmm. Comerica to make $15 NES carts. Yeah. <laughs> and there's... They made like they an made attachment this, for the NES. It's called the Aladdin yeah. Deck Enhancer, mm. which yeah. uh, like right here. Yeah, I, and so they I did had games like to buy some of those in box. Wow. The Adventures of it. Dizzy was one of their games, and they're mm-hmm. like budget titles. Yeah, which Dizzy you, has a couple NES. You would buy this one Aladdin cart uh, that stuck into your NES, and then you buy these smaller, cheaper carts that were interchangeable with it. So it was a way to greatly reduce the cost of. Well, and does that buy? Past the like chip or whatever to make it where it runs. Yeah, it all, all worked done. on NES. Yeah. So, so who, Unless you have a top they made like bright gold and top silver board. bootleg cartridges too. Yeah. There's one that has Dizzy on it and three other games. It's like a four and one. I remember so the really like Wisdom games, Tree so. games, all the blue games, stuff like that. Color Dreams all had of those. Wisdom Tree. Yeah. Who made all the like 101s and all that <clears> stuff for the NES? Like, well, there's all uh, companies all over, but usually there's like, uh, well, there's a famous one called the Caltron Six and One. Okay. Yeah, the Hundred and Ones were usually on Game Boy a little bit, and then there's Nintendo ones from like way in the '90s. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. I remember better. those ones. Yeah. Here's an ad for the Sega Game Gear that shows a dog and both the Sega Game Gear and the Game Boy, and the text says, <clears throat> "If you are colorblind and had an IQ less than 12, then you wouldn't care which portable you had." <laughs> All right. Which one is this advocating? I was going to say, really don't is this going get... for the Game also, Gear? Also, can you imagine nowadays, Game Gear. like... Remember, this is an ad for the Game Gear, not the Game Boy. Okay. Right. They're that... dissing the Game Boy. But, like, can you imagine nowadays, like, Xbox ever printing some sort of ad Attack that ad? had any sort of, like, no. a, a PS4 on it? No. Yeah, I mean, the, the only... The, the press conferences do that. The though. recent... The They'll most, go after not anymore. Other, yeah, the most recent one I, I can like remember kind of of is when <laughs> Xbox and Nintendo kind of, like, teamed up to to bring the Fortnite together, and they were, like, you know, saying, hey, we're playing together. That was when PlayStation was holding out. Yeah, but those support. are, like, subtle. Like, they yeah, literally put a Our Game Boy thing. in yeah. their ad. Like, you're not going to say, Xbox One X, the most powerful console, and then show, like, a PS4 Pro broken on the street. Like, they just wouldn't <laughs> do that. No, that's why they don't If you had an IQ of less than 12, yeah. You yeah. may not realize that the Xbox One X is the most powerful console of all time. But but the underdog can always do that and get away with it. Pepsi did it with Coke. Apple did it with Windows before they came. So like that that makes sense. It was the nineties, man. I, they they led up to it. it was, they led up to it. Every it was day is for survival. International news. Here's a headline that says, "Sit on it." Now Japanese gamers will be able to take gameplay realism to all new heights or lows. With the special virtual cushion from NEC Home Electronics, players can add to game interaction by sitting on this pad that's filled with speakers. What? The device, the device costs a heavy-duty $100, but that's a small price to pay if you want to feel the crushing blows of Ryu in your butt. I don't want to see this. I don't want to see, wanna see it right now. <laughs> it's just this thing. It's, it's a, a cr- pillow. It's a cushion. What? That goes what? in your butt? <laughs> not in your butt, Sam. <laughs> There's a disclaimer here. Do not insert in butt. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God they put that. Man, that was a close one. <laughs> it's a precursor to the Wii balance board right there. Here's an ad for flashback on Sega Genesis. It mm-hmm. says, notice, Genesis owners, we are aware that all of you were not lucky enough to get a CD player for your Genesis system this past Christmas. So that you're not penalized for your misfortune, we are introducing our first CD-ROM game on a cartridge. Introducing flashback, the CD-ROM game on a cartridge. <laughs> The only thing that would make that ad better Weird. is if they showed a copy of Out of This World mm-hmm. broken on the street. Like, mm-hmm. that's Here's true. a copy or an ad for Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade on Sega Genesis. The tagline is snakes, rats, poison, and danger. It's like eating in the cafeteria. 
Oh, <laughs> take that great. lunch, ladies. <laughs> Malk. <laughs> Malk. <laughs> now with vitamin. Vitamin, what is it? R? It's R. <laughs> <laughs> I love, there's a huge <laughs> section here. The 1993 Directory of Super <laughs> Nintendo Games. 1993 Directory of Super Nintendo Games. And it's Battle really, Zone, really long. Man. Yeah, it's Battle just like goes Maniacs. on forever. That's and they, so get, they give little blurbs on all these games. Games like Super Battle Tank, Amazing Tennis, Toys. There's a couple oh. good uh, standouts in here. Simpsons. First of all, everyone take a look at this. Uh, there's an ad here for Super Strike Eagle on Super Nintendo. Just remember what this ad looks like. We'll revisit that later. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> So if you jump ahead here. There's a uh, preview for in their uh, Super Nintendo encyclopedia of games and controllers, Super Mega Man. They say it's about time that Capcom has brought this title out. I wish that's what it was. It's no. a great mm-hmm. game, and the series has already broken the technical limits of the NES. Really cool. 16-bit. So that's a preview of X, huh? Yeah, that's cool. It's gotta be. Yeah, they called it. Does it look like Super Mega Man, or is it Mega Man? 7? They just have art. They don't show it. Oh, no oh gotcha. I think that's just Mega Man Seven, then. Right. Anyone remember the game Desert Strike? Yeah. Sequel to Jungle Strike. They say, this game is just plain fun. If you ever wanted to fly over some settlements and blow away the enemy, this game is for you. The control is very responsive. Mom, I want a game where I get to fly over settlements. <laughs> Don't worry, guys. <laughs> the controls are responsive. <laughs> is that like the chopper game? Is that the one Choplifter? from the area? Choplifter? Yeah. Is it like that or no? No, it's but, just a shooter. It's a bit more of an isometric yeah. Uh, look. Yeah. Oh, man. Chester Cheetah. Mm-hmm. They oh, say the animation go. alone will lure you to this cart. Yes. The cartoon like look and feel is well done. You'll laugh out loud when you see him shake his head in pain. Uh, <laughs> I'm waiting for the Earthworm Jim one. It was like Chester Cheetah, Bubsy, Earthworm Jim. Those were all kinds of uh, those animated shake his head characters. <laughs> <laughs> and then Sam, remember oh. we spent a whole afternoon playing Doomsday cool Warrior. That's the other one I was thinking of when you said uh, Chester Cheetah. Remember Doomsday Warrior, the fighting game? Yes. It's in here. A great Stop. fighting game. There is plenty of moves and technique as you face unique and tricky bosses. Dramatic music fills your ears as you duke it out. There it is. Duke is right. It could. It could what if you had the butt speaker, though? Ooh. Uh, do you know a Super Careful. Nintendo game called Skull Jagger? Skull Jagger, yeah. I don't know I don't the know, game. I don't know if I know that. It's like a piratey game. It is a pirate-themed game. Oh, no, no. That's the one with a shotgun. That's what it was. Well, I, no. You're thinking of Blackthorn. Oh, that's Blackthorn. Yeah. yeah. This does appear to be uh, a pirate game, and there's an ad here for the Skull Jagger Insult Contest, the free 24-hour Skull Jagger Insult line. Mm. Don't miss your chance to hear Super Nintendo's newest and hottest superstar, Captain Skull Jagger, as he dishes out a string of his patented insults. It's a free <laughs> number, and Skull Jagger is standing by 24 hours a day, ready and willing Whoa. to insult your pathetic gaming skills, That's your true, heinous yeah. pimply girlfriend, <laughs> Your cheeseball clothes and every other aspect of your sniveling, worthless existence. Anus. Wow. <laughs> I wonder if anyone's trying to... That's right. Oh. He's talking to you, pig slime. <laughs> Why'd you look at me when you said that? <laughs> and in between withering oh. insults... Hey, you called. <laughs> I, 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 I... Skull Jagger <laughs> might even give you tips to help you discover tons of hidden stuff Maybe. in the amazing new Super Nintendo game, Skull Jagger, Revolt of the Westicans. Your mom. And there's a picture of Skull Jagger here holding it here, it and he says... Greetings, pig slime. <laughs> I just I wonder when that number finally like <laughs> turned off. When it, when they turned it That's off. That's not all the copy. It says that is if you're not too brain dead to figure them out, you miserable pus filled imbecile. Uh, <laughs> Can you handle it? Can you handle the killer Super Nintendo game? You spineless panty waist. <laughs> Are you big enough? <laughs> <laughs> That's about all of it. Little little did they realize the internet would provide that on tap a mere 10 years later I know. in text form, <laughs> yeah. 24 hours, seven days a week. <laughs> Skull Jagger was ahead of its time. Um, oh, That's man. a great point. It's, uh, like, it's like a Sergeant point. Slaughter from WWF there. It's a weird device on that That's page weird. across the NES. Uh, oh, yeah, so there's a... <laughs> There's an ad here for this product that says, now gamers can go where they've never gone before, to their friend's house. <laughs> Rude. Wow. Is it still that yeah. same guy? Fast. Skull <laughs> 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 Jagger on the set. Pig Did slimes? Did this whole thing? <laughs> it's called the Teleplay System. It says, fasten your seatbelt. Big slime. Baton. <laughs> with Baton Technologies' new Teleplay System, you're about to experience the future in out-of-this-world head-to-head competition with your friends, whether they're down the block, across town, on Nintendo, or Sega Genesis. So it's a modem. 
That's right. You're not, yeah. definitely not going to yeah. go to your friend's house. Two screens. Yeah. <laughs> You're not going to your friend's house. Still not going to your friend's house. The, the, the premise <laughs> that they started with. It's the definition of not going to your friend's house. <laughs> it was called the teleplay system. I don't think it was ever actually put out. Ugh. And here we are again. Yeah. <laughs> It's the same it's ad. The same ad. <laughs> oh my god! From earlier. That would have been the best ad buy of the game all is time. For, the game is for Super Strike Eagle on Super Nintendo, and they just got it in the magazine. How much twice. your ads? <laughs> Double it. Double it. <laughs> we want them all. They wanted. They wanted to be before and after the insult guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think that's about it. Oh, the end your face shirt. <laughs> yeah. Right? I don't think we're gonna top anything. Find anything better? Oh yeah, Sam. I wanted to. Uh, Point out, uh, there's a, a news article in the back. Humor from beyond this world. Mystery Science Theater Whoa. 3000 has become one of the hottest shows on cable television. After watching it only once, it's easy to see why. Mm, that's really cool. What year? 92? Uh, 93. Oh, this is a Lethal Weapon Super Theater. Nintendo game that I never played. But there are sharks in the game, and I don't remember sharks in any <laughs> Lethal Weapon movie. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't matter. And that brings us to Video Game 20 Questions. Our suggestion this week comes from Brian in Austin, Texas. Let the questioning begin. Could this have been in this issue of EGM? No. Okay. That doesn't narrow it down that much. So you don't have to ask if it came up before 1993 now. Yeah, I was thinking of the questions because people have notoriously been flaming me for being terrible, even when we win. So is it... it, is it <laughs> they are, that's fair, that's fair. Is it in this current console generation? No. Oh, man. I that was going to broad us. Just because you said no doesn't mean it was a bad question. No, I know. No, but I, yeah, I was hoping that would... So that does eliminate a fair amount in the last, like... Uh... uh does I'm sorry, I'm sitting here. Does your character wear a hat? <laughs> no, you didn't. I did yes. It. Oh. It worked. Wow. Sorry, Justin. <laughs> oh. The one episode you missed. Define hat. <clears throat> Was this ga- game released on laser based media? <laughs> no, optical media. There you go. Uh optical media, yes. Yes. Okay. Um, so I mean I'm thinking probably uh, like yeah, I mean Probably like the Xbox, Xbox 360, that PlayStation 2, 3 mm-hmm. era. But we don't know that. But yet. We don't know. Just but ask, you can ask if it's at. Was this from after the year 2000? Yes. Okay. okay. So, uh, we're still in that era, though, now. So. Yeah, but now you know for sure you're in that era. Yeah, but is I, this a, from a first, uh, is this a first party game? Yes. Okay. Okay. At okay. first party. Okay. Uh, let's, I was going to say, uh, <laughs> is this a Nintendo franchise? Yes. Okay. Oh, sweet. So it could either be. It's probably Wii. Okay. So well, into the Wii territory, probably. Well, technically, GameCube's optical, right? Oh, yeah. I suppose. It Dang is. it. Is this is. is this part of the Mushroom Kingdom? No. Okay. Okay. So let's see. Bomberman wears a helmet. That's not a Nintendo. Also not a Nintendo game. Yeah. <laughs> uh man. Okay. So I feel like we. I feel like. Because we have so many to go, we need to narrow down what console it is for. Yep. Uh, so, is this game uh, on What's the game? Do? Is it What's on gonna do? the GameCube? No. Okay. okay. So. so, it should be a Wii game. A game. Or Wii U. Or Wii U. It's technically Wii U, not part of this generation. Uh, oh, that's right. That's a, that's a caveat. Does this game have a sequel or a, a something from this series on the Nintendo Switch? Well, those seem like two different questions. Is this game have a, uh, like, you know, is this series still around today on the Nintendo Switch? Okay, so. Yeah, in the, in the broader sense, yes, in terms of, there's, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's not like you won't, you won't find a direct sequel to this game on the yeah. Nintendo Switch, but the series is still around, yes. Okay. That's 10. So, Helmet. Um, uh, hat. Or uh, hat, or uh, hat. Yeah. Okay, uh, is this a platformer? No. Ooh, okay. Okay. Um, let's see. Is this game, uh, does it have an open world? No. <sighs> Should we talk about controls? I feel like we well, could. you did this. Yeah, I know, I, exactly, yeah. Well, it's you, it's you. But you wore a hat. While you did it, well, that's right. <laughs> now, <laughs> not me well, hold on, hold on. About the exclusive thing, did we say it was exclusive to the console or it is a Nintendo franchise? Nintendo I don't remember. Nintendo franchise. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, it is not the Donkey Kong. It sounds like it might be kind of weird. 
Uh, I don't know where to go with this. Talk it out. We'll, we'll help you. Does this game have motion controls? Yes. Okay. So probably. <clears throat> Ooh. But it's um, not related to Mario at all. No motion well, controls. Well, hang, oh, hang on. So, so I want to eliminate the touchpad to see if it was Wii. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, motion control still is, uh, could, be, could be Wii U. Yeah, a little bit. Like the Wario game. Yeah. Had it and yeah, sure, just... Yeah, it, stuff it, like that, but it's just, just a little bit. Yeah, I know. Um, I'm, I'm, I, I think it's going to be something other than that. But yeah, me too. It's That's not the reason why like I pile wings wanna... or something. Because yeah, yeah. Those aren't, those aren't around anymore. Um, should we try to, like, lock in, you know, the genre, like fighting games or... Uh, is, 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 the, is the main character of this game a fighter in Smash Brothers? Yes. Okay. okay. Now I just think. Okay. Is it part so, of the Zelda universe? Yes. Okay. Okay. Let's Perfect. Just, let's just get That's this over. great. That's it's great. It's probably Link's crossbow training. That's 15. Link's crossbow training. Yeah, because it's not open world, so it has to be a Zelda-related game yeah. that is not It's not Skyward Sword. It's not Twilight Princess. Yes. Does this work with the zapper? Yes. <laughs> well. Okay. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> just ask the question. We could we get like boned at this point. No, 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 no. We, we have three questions to narrow it down. That's like, we might yeah. as well just narrow it down. Okay. Uh, do you shoot a crossbow in this game? Yes. Okay. <laughs> oh, this is getting good. This is good. Um, <laughs> what else we got? We got two more. Will <laughs> I be trained up by the end of this game? Should be. Uh, yes. Fantastic. <laughs> it could be. Uh, uh, let's see. <laughs> what else we got? Uh, do you rip out anybody's spine in this game? <laughs> no. Okay. That's so it, was, you guys are out of questions, so I'm afraid <laughs> you're gonna have to make a guess now. I, I was thinking it was either Mortal Kombat or Link's crossbow training. Yeah, so. or Hyrule Warriors. Is that I'm just kidding? Who wants the honor? <laughs> you go ahead. Well, CJ, you you're did. the terrible one. No, no, so no, 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 you, you, you deserve it. Link's crossbow training. Can it, we just leave? There yes, <laughs> it is Link's. <laughs> you did good, Sam. Crossbow you training. Pretty good one. 2007. I was worried if it you guys. It is obscure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't want to mislead you when you asked the question. Is this series still on the? Yeah. Switch. I was like, well, this game is in yeah. the obvious mm -hmm. Zelda. Mm -hmm. so. I don't know where I was going with that. No, I was going to eliminate Pilot Wings. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to eliminate Smash Bros. It's always so. your goal every week with yeah. 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 <laughs> get, get It's going to be Pilot Wings at some point, uh, and we have 20 questions. You might as well get. just use one of them for that. Yeah. Sure. Nicely done. Thank you. Nicely job. Nicely job. Thank Good you job. for the suggestion, Brian in Austin, Texas. That is all the scoops that we have for you this week. Uh, remember, you can always reach us at the email address, gamescoop at IGN.com. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Sam. Thank you. Thank you, CJ. Thanks, man. Thank you, Dan, the booth. My name is Damon. This is IGN Gamescoop. All right.